So. You want to be a content creator. Or literally any other type of entertainer. Well, you came to the right place because I, triple question mark, a man with less than 300 subscribers and deep-seated social anxiety, am about to teach you how to become an entertainment God. And by the end of this video, if you think I failed at teaching you how to be entertaining, I will execute this dog. I'll, I'll, I'll fucking do it. Don't tempt me, I'll fucking do it. I'll blow its fucking brains out. It would be so easy and no one would know except you and me. It would be so fucking easy. And hey, be sure to like and subscribe and whatnot. Now listen. I know the first thing they teach you at Video SE Academy is not to start off your video with the definition because it's cliche and boring, but fuck you, this is important. Entertainment is anything that supplies enjoyment. That's it. Remember, enjoyment doesn't exclusively mean fun or positive. Things that are dark, depressing, and even things that make you sick to your stomach can supply enjoyment. Knowing that, I took the liberty to break down the art of entertainment into three fairly abstract rules. Those rules, as I like to call it, are the pillars of entertainment. Every YouTuber, streamer, actor, artist, OnlyFans creator that you subscribe to follows these rules. And if you hope to ever be like them, then you will too. And listen, I know people are going to use this against me by saying that this video wasn't entertaining and I have no idea what I'm talking about, but come on guys, give me a chance. I'm trying my best here. I'm just trying to entertain. I'm just <laughs> Any anyway, the first rule is Do something likable. Obviously, what's likable is incredibly subjective. Don't show demonic imagery to a priest. Don't show PETA a Big Mac. And don't tell Genshin Impact players to stay away from school zones. It's really that simple. This step is all about being socially aware enough to know what your audience likes and following it. This is the easiest rule to follow, and I feel almost stupid reiterating it, but so, so, so many content creators fail at this. It's it's insane. But a creator that I believe does this sort of thing incredibly well is Ludwig. Boys! He's an incredibly charismatic man. I feel like I, I, I feel, fuck. I feel like he's able to attract and garner a loyal fan base easily with his online persona. So much so that his subathon lasted an entire month thanks to the support he built around his likable personality. But what if I don't have an audience? I can hear you cry from your coom cave only lit by the faint blue tint of your computer screen. Well, worry no longer, my socially isolated degenerate. You could always simply build an audience that actively seeks you out. Work on putting out content, and if your content is good enough, then an audience will be attracted simply by that. Trust me, I'm obviously the most qualified person to tell you this. To sum this rule up, don't do anything the people viewing your art would not like to see. Like shooting a dog on camera, for example. Although, it's mighty tempting. Do something different. This step is definitely the one that the vast majority get wrong. And to be honest, I'm pretty passionate about this pillar. The people who fail at this rules are the generic, predictable, not a single original thought crowd. Go on any social media website and you'll find the most unfunny, uncreative hacks out there. They don't have a personality of their own. They just become an NPC that mindlessly repeats and attempts to emulate the identity of already popular personalities instead of creating and cultivating one of their own. It's asinine. I think the absolute worst example of this unoriginality are the people who are using the boring, overused, oversaturated vaporwave 80s VHS aesthetic weight. This pillar is a bit paradoxical because 9 times out of 10, people fail this rule because they try to follow the likable pillar far too closely. Attempting to be too likable usually results in you becoming forgettable in the process. Now, how do you avoid becoming one of those no good dime a dozen artists out there? Well, I have three primary methods for you. The first one being the Pixar method in their 22 rules for storytelling. First, start by brainstorming ideas. It could be literally anything. Then, delete your first five. For the remaining ideas, ask yourself, 
Has this been done before? If the answer is yes, discard that as well. Keep going until you have an original or close to an original idea. And you know what? Maybe if Pixar followed their own rules, they'd actually make something good. And listen, you don't have to be completely original. Only a little. Ludwig, I'm mentioning him again, describes this second method as the yoink and twist. Basically, you steal someone else's idea, but add your own spin to it. If you want more info, go check out Ludwig's video. But not before you finish this one. Like and subscribe. But let's just say you're not convinced of doing this method either. You want to be completely original. Well, guess what, you Xanax gargling, repugnant, smegma smear stain? There's no such thing as complete originality. It's a lie, a myth, a hoax. Every piece of art, media, show, YouTube, video, stream, cave painting, everything made by humans is plagiarized from something or someone else period true originality as we know it is just combining two or more things into something that has never been combined before so the third method would be to pick out two or more ideas maybe on that list from earlier and attempt to mash them together to see what works and remember in this rule you only have to be different to your audience not to the entire world so give yourself some leeway come on a little plagiarism never hurt anybody stealing ideas is what online content creation is all about failure in following this step makes you forgettable a cardinal sin in entertainment remember it's better to create something good than to create something bad and it's better to create something bad over something forgettable and it's better to create something forgettable than nothing at all and if all your art looks the same it's probably not very good do it right this pillar is the most straightforward out of the three don't fuck it up you could have the most likable premise and the most original idea but if the execution is shit then it's going to be shit can you imagine watching a small ant video where he attempts a speedrun challenge but never makes it past the first stage and immediately gives up that would be terrible well small ant can make it entertaining in a different or his own way but that's besides the point have an amazing script with a never before told story but an absolutely shit cast of actors well the movie's gonna be bad have a unique video game premise with an enchanting atmosphere, but an absolutely abysmal control scream, control scheme, game's gonna be trash. Have a YouTuber with an amazing sense of humor with videos worth subscribing over, but with a stuttering problem which makes editing an absolute nightmare, which causes him to not upload over a year and a half out of perfectionism and dread of editing his own voice. <gasps> well. You get a person who was not very entertaining, but now that he is, you should definitely subscribe. But what if it's entertaining, but not the way the creator intended? And hey, that's valid. Sometimes art is interpreted differently by its audience against the author's intent. For example, Majora's Mask didn't match the creator's vision, yet it was a great source of entertainment. But when it was remade to match their vision, it was a complete shit show. Or when people post cringe or create so bad it's good content. I'm the Joker, baby! <laughs> These people didn't intend for it to come out entertaining in that way, but it simply did. How can this rule hold up if there are cases like that? The answer is that there's no one correct answer when making something right. It's like throwing darts at a dartboard. As long as it doesn't completely miss, you still did it right. Sure, you didn't hit the bullseye, but you still hit the board, and that's all that matters. You don't need to do it right from your perspective, but rather your audience's perspective. Of course, you should follow these rules, but know that they are fairly abstract. I'm sure you can break these rules down into smaller, more concrete sets of instructions to follow, and maybe adjust them to fit your niche. But if I were to cover all that, this video's production would take me way too long to make. Anyway, do you think I've explained myself well enough? Should I let this cute little dog live another day, or should I put the old boy down? Let me know in the comments down below, and next episode I'll- Oh god! Oh god, I, I, I didn't mean to actually- Oh no, Jesus Christ.
What? What? What should I do? What? <laughs> now listen, right? I wanted to do this last bit of me being kidnapped with my night vision camera, but I want to release this video this Wednesday, but it's Monday and I'm honestly very tired. So I'll just tell you the most important info here. And trust me, it's probably the most important part of the whole video. So. This video wasn't meant to be a guide on how to become famous or anything like that. I have no idea how to do that. This video was more meant to be as a guide to be entertaining. You could be entertaining to an audience of millions or just yourself. Size doesn't really come into factor. And also, the thing that ties all of these rules together is who makes up your audience. What's likable, different, or done right varies audience to audience. So the only way for these pillars to work is by knowing your audience to some extent. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Just like last time, on the side are people who have subbed and commented on the last video. I wanted to give an extra thank you to you guys for getting me past 100 subs. It really does mean the world and the support has been great. Uh, I'm gonna try to be more consistent. Actually, you know what? No. I am going to be more consistent here on out. I'm aiming for at least one video every month. And of course, like and subscribe and all that jazz. But also tell your friends, share it around on the Twitters, Discords, Reddits. Just spread the word of this video on my channel. You have no idea how much it helps small creators such as myself. Even the smallest amount of support is unimaginably helpful for people like me. Every single new sub, viewer, commenter, like really does mean more than you know. And yeah, that's about it. I'll see you guys later.